What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of C and C. This is episode number 18. And we started this sort of scouting update and an academy update as we enter December. And as you can see, we put a couple more players in our academy from this latest batch of scouting, including this guy right here and also this guy who really excites me. 15 years old, Gavin Humphreys. 3.5 mil valuation already at just 15 years old. That's one of the highest valuations I've seen on a player ready to be put in your academy. I, I can't remember I can't remember the last time I had a player around that valuation, and maybe even higher. That might be the highest valuation I've seen on a player in a scouting update. 3.5 mil, 67 overall. I'm gonna train this guy to CM, Emir, the other guy I put in there with a very low potential. There's a very good chance I just release him, to be honest. But Gavin Humphreys, this guy really excites me. I don't really know where he should be playing. He could easily be retrained to CM. He could easily be retrained to play on the wings. He could easily be retrained to play as a centre forward. Or we could keep him as a natural attacking midfielder. Amazing passing stats already. Very good dribbler of the ball. I'd like to get his pace up a little bit. But I've got to say, this guy really excites me. And looking at his stats, looking at his versatility in the offensive creativity positions, I've got to say, is this guy... Is this guy the Welsh Phil Foden, the free roll type of player we could have in this Newport County side? I'm not entirely sure, but that's the one player that came to mind when I was looking at his range of stats. His relatively young age, or well, relatively young age, he's 15 years old. He can't even get a pro deal yet, but his young age, I, Phil Foden was the first player that came to mind when I was thinking about him. You know when you get youth players and you're like, what player is he modelled after? What player does he remind me of? Yeah, the Welsh Phil Foden. Perhaps we've got him in the academy. One of those class free role players. I've been hearing a lot recently. Obviously, he's been in the media quite a lot. You know, Pundit saying he could definitely be an elite free role player as the years go by. I feel I feel like nowadays in football, um, because oftentimes tactical systems and setups can often be quite rigid. There isn't a great deal amount of fluidity and personal expression often allowed in players. I I do I do feel as though nowadays, like free role players. Don't, I wouldn't say don't exist, but they're not quite as common, if you will. But you think about the likes and, and some of the, the elite players of, of years gone by, you know, your, your Ronaldinho's, your Maradona's, for example. Hearing a lot about how Phil Foden could be turned into that elite free role player who can do practically anything and play wherever he wants, just hovering around the creative areas. Gavin Humphreys could be that guy. So, yeah, the Welsh Phil Foden, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, first game this was the FA Cup second round. Lost to Crawley Town. Totally fine with me. I mentioned it before. Getting through to the third round is nice. you got a chance of facing a Premier League side last year. We did that. And, of course, humbled by Southampton. and Lost the replay. I think it was 8-0 or something terrible. So, we'll avoid that embarrassment out of the FA Cup early. But that was okay with me. Because following game, we will take on Salford City. Promoted alongside us from League 2 last season. I would win by a goal to Ben Davis scoring the only goal of the game in that one as we pick up the three points and back-to-back -back wins in the league after our win over AFC Wimbledon in the last episode. So yeah, two wins from two in the league. Never mind that cup defeat there. And I was okay with it. After I went out to Crawley Town, I was thinking this could easily be a blessing in disguise. What's one thing I've mentioned a lot in this series? Well, fixture congestion in the lower leagues. I talk about it. In League 1 and League 2, you play a minimum of 50 games a season in all competitions. Competitions. You got your 46 league games, you got at least one EFL Cup game, and you got at least uh, one FA Cup game and two Papa John's Trophies games as well. So going out of those competitions early means you're going to focus all of your attention on the league. Our sole priority this season is promotion to the Championship. So going out of the FA Cup in the second round, not suffering the humiliation of a big third round defeat to a Premier League side like we had last season, that could prove to be a blessing in disguise. Although, of course, it's only going to work out that way if we win our league game. So following that home park, Plymouth away, heading into this game here, aiming to make it three wins from three. Took lead very early on through Ruben Colwell. He is having an amazing season for us this year. He's eighth of the campaign and 28 minutes in. Collins in for Isaac Davis makes it two. I, I gotta say, you know, sometimes my celebration game is poor. <laughs> There's no other way of putting it. But I'm starting to experiment a little bit more with the other triggers and the other buttons as well as Ruby Colwell bends in his absolute beauty right before the break. I'm not really good at celebrations in FIFA. I mean, it's, it's not the sort of thing which kind of impacts your gameplay, I'll be honest. But I would like to memorise quite a few of them. There's a few combinations I do know. you got the show respect, which is the L1 and double circle. you got the Ronaldo Sue celebration, which is R1 and circle. The arm flex is R1, then uh, up and then down with the trigger, with the, uh, the um, 
the uh, the stick. Sorry, but uh, there there are a few more I want to like memorize, if you will. At the moment, I'm I'm still learning. I I don't know what it is, but like since the celebrations changed around many years ago, I've struggled to memorize many. But uh, some of them look really cool, including for Carl Will second, and then in the second half, he will grab his hat trick as well. And that was a memorable moment for one reason here. Plymouth would ruin our clean sheet right towards the end of the game and then celebrate it like they just claimed a point. <laughs> but it meant for the first time in the series we saw a hat-trick. Yeah, first hat-trick of the series. It goes to Ruben Colwell. He got goals 8, 9 and 10 for the season in this game as well. And I mentioned it. I mentioned it quite a few times as well. I'm surprised this guy doesn't have a potential tag. Big three goals there in a 4-1 win. And there you go. After three wins in three, Newport County at a halfway point... Uh, 13 points off Bristol City. We know they're going to win the league, but we've gone into second place. We're three clear of Hull. We're six clear of the three teams below Hull in the playoffs right now. And Newport County are in an automatic promotion place. Yeah, don't bottle it now. Halfway point, and we worked hard to get it. I, I mentioned before, like, Bristol City, they, they are just going to run away with this league. I'm not even setting my sights on trying to catch them. There's so many points ahead. They're clearly the best team in this division. But for Hull City, they'll be faltering a little bit. A nice little run of form for us. Three straight wins, nine points from nine. And now we leap from the Tigers and go into second. I do not care one bit if Bristol City win the title by 20 points. But for us, if we can stay in second place and gain automatic promotion, that would be absolutely brilliant. I don't want the playoffs, man. I don't want the playoffs because I think I'll bottle it and we've got a small score as well. But hey, listen, second place right now. 23 games in, 23 games to go. And right now we're exactly where we want to be. Question is, can we stay there? Well, for the fourth game of today's episode, trip to the Kassam. Stay on Oxford United. Good start for them this season here. 31 minutes into the game, we will take the lead. Ruben Colwell with a hat-trick in the last game turn provider for our first assisting our top scorer this year Isaac Davis they've been our best two players they combined for our first goal and then a few minutes later aiming to double it once again we're utilizing the pace of Cole Will and Davis in the front three we've got as Davis rolls through Tony Matthews who bends one in off the post was it just me by the way or did that shot kind of like go in in slow motion when I saw it in real time it seemed like time just slowed down to like half the speed but anyway he finds the back of the net second of the season for Tony always nice when academy graduate gets to go. We go 2 and up at the Kassam and we're leading by 2 against the side right now in 4th place. So this will be a massive win here. 4 straight and gaining some separation on a team in the playoffs. But to be fair, this was not a one-sided game. We were leading by 2 and just past the hour mark we would make it 3. Once again utilising the pace. Sam Pearson going down the right. Cutting across the 6-yard area and there is that man once again. Our number 30, our top scorer this year, Isaac Davis to bang in from close range. to get his goal, his uh, second goal, sorry and his, what's that, 12th goal of the season. Yeah, he's got 12. Cole Will's got 10. These two have been an amazing duo in our front three. And Sam Pearson, he's, he's still chipped in with a few goals himself as well. Got the assist for that one. It was eventually a 3-0 win. But again, you saw the highlights there. I always present the highlights package very fairly. That scoreline was quite deceptive. It feels quite one-sided when you look at it. 3-0, but absolutely not. Oxford United put us under a tremendous amount of pressure. Had it not been for Webb between the sticks, might not have won that game, but we did. 3-0 the final score. Three points picked up, four wins from four, and 12 points from 12. And now Newport County are in the swing of things. Yes, it's been a really inconsistent season. Haven't really had a good run of form in a long time, but now we're really starting to pick it up. Following game, Blackpool coming to take us on here, the lads from Bloomfield Road, and we take the lead right before the break. It's that man once again. Davis is our top scorer, but I'd say this guy's been our best player. Ruben Carwood, a former Bluebird, with another goal number 11 for the season, makes it 1 0 right before the break. And then right after the break, once again, we utilize the pace he's got in behind the back line. And, you know, I've mentioned it many, many times before, but it's it's the way to go in this year's FIFA, I feel, in lower league football for sure. Like, don't, don't worry too much about the technical ability of your players because they probably won't have much if you're playing a very low standard of football the chances are they're not going to dribble like Messi they're not going to pass like Xavi and they're not going to defend like PK I'm not a Barcelona fan I promise but even so they're not going to be elite technically but physically they can match up and as we are tuning up here for Isaac Davis from the corner I was thinking okay five wins from five this would be absolutely huge Blackpool would grab a goal back right after the hour mark to make it 2-1 half the deficit and put us under pressure but we would hold on our dynamic duo once again at the double. And as you can see, we've now gained some separation. Final game of December, we've got Walsall. And we have a chance, if we were to win this game, a result were to go our way, of cutting the gap on Bristol City to single digits for the first time in God knows how long. Look, I don't think we're going to catch them. 
but there's a chance to cut it to single digits. So taking on Walsall, obviously last season promoted alongside us, they won the title in lead two. Didn't think this would be an easy game to be fair, despite five straight wins and being the favourites. They had the first chance, good save by Wibbon their post, kept it at 0-0. And in the first half, I'd really done nothing. I need to pick my game up in the second half. Once again, we're utilising that pace, going down the right side of Rashesha. 57 minutes in, our right wing back continues. Whips one across, and there is Davis once again. I'm scoring a lot more goals like this now, going down the flank, stepping inside, and cutting it across. If it's working, don't change it. Isaac Davis gets another top scorer with another goal to open the score and make it 1-0 to Newport County. And I was thinking if we can hold on to this, potentially cutting the gap on the Robins, extending the gap on the Tigers. You know, in a, in a league of 24 teams, it's hard to get separation. There's so much congestion, but now we've got the chance. Question is, could we hold on? Well, 69 minutes into the game, Johnson shot the flex for right into the path of Ben Davis. And our vet, well, I say vet, 29-year-old makes it 2-0 Newport County, and that would do it. Yeah, a little bit of a fortunate goal there. Once again, Rochesha causing problems. Johnson shot the flex, but straight to the former Spurs and Swansea fullback turn midfielder. And there it is. Clean, short, uh, clean sheet for Newport County. Another big win. It is five in a row in the league. And I believe actually thinking about it, six in a row now. Great run of form for Newport County. And to close out the calendar year, Look at the league table. We've gone from the playoffs to eight points clear in second and now cutting the gap on the Robins to nine as well. We finally got some separation. We finally got some breathing room. Our 20 minutes to go. We are in an automatic promotion place. Buzzing. Question is, can we stay there? Can we catch the Robins? And we can, can we hold off the teams in the playoffs? So, when's this is the CNC though, guys? Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you haven't, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for CNC. The January transfer window will open very soon.